Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Technodox here. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the newly released iPhone 15 Pro and the 15 Pro Max. So quickly getting the prices out of the way, the 15 Pro Max this year starts from $1199, so it has gone up by $100, and one of the main reasons for that is because it now starts at 256 gigabytes of storage, but the 15 Pro has stayed the same at $999, starting at 128 gigs of storage. I do have the 256, for the 15 Pro here, and I do have the 512 gigabyte version for the 15 Pro Max. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open these up. Taking a look at the packaging, we do have the white box again with a nice dark themed wallpaper. This is gonna be the black version. We do have four colors this year. We have natural titanium. We have this white titanium. This is the black one. And then we also do have this blue one. The colors aren't really appealing this year. Natural titanium did look really well, but I did go for the black and the blue. I really do want to see the differences between the two. So the Ford 15 Pro, they are both made out of titanium this year. So in return, they are a lot uh, lighter compared to the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro Max which is a good thing. You do get the stronger material, but it is a lighter material. All right, so opening both these up in three, two, one. Here we have our first look at the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max in again, black and blue. So right now with the light shining on them, this, the back glass at least seems a lot more grayish. It seems like a dark gray, which in my opinion looks really nice. The camera lens area is black, the glass, and then the lenses themselves again are the grayish color just like the back glass. And then also with the blue one, we do have the blue finish, as you can see right here, which again looks really nice. We do get a dark blue with the lenses, or the lens glass, and then with the lenses, we do have that same uh, blue color, which in my opinion, looks super nice. So taking both these devices out, again, a close up, they both do look really nice. And you can definitely tell the difference. So this might change in the lighting conditions, but with the first uh, pictures that we did see from the Apple event, it seemed like we wouldn't be able to see the differences with these devices. But again, that is not the case here. We can definitely see the differences that come with from these devices. All right, so looking at the inside, uh, we are gonna notice that we do now have a USB-C to C cable, which is something I've been waiting for for a long time. This is probably the biggest upgrade they had this year. Again, it's not really an upgrade. USB-C has been out for a really long time, but finally Apple has done it. They kind of were first forced into doing it, but again, it's fine. They did get there, which is good to know. Again, it is a braided cable, so it is a lot higher quality compared to their previous cables, but you still don't get the max capability that these devices actually can have with this cable. This is a base cable, doesn't really have the speeds for that, but again, you can go ahead and pick up your own cable later on for that. So it's nice to have an upgraded cable. It is braided and it is USB-C now, so everything currently is with USB-C, and I'm really, it's really nice for me because everything that I use other than my iPhones used to be uh, USB-C, so it was kind of annoying that I had to carry a lightning cable around every now and then. So inside, we do get Apple stickers and some pamphlets right here, and again, we don't get a SIM injection tool in North America at least because we now have eSIM, which in my opinion is pretty annoying. I'd rather have the SIM card capability, which is a lot nicer in my opinion. All right, so we don't get colored Apple stickers, so it's not the color of the phone that you get, and we don't get a braided cable that is actually the color of the iPhone, unlike the MacBook Airs that we're getting, which in my opinion would have been super nice if I had a black cable and a blue cable and a white cable or a creamish cable for the natural titanium. But again, this is what Apple has done. So moving these to the side, let's take a look again at these devices. All right, so these definitely feel a lot lighter. So here I have the 14 Pro, and then here I have the 15 Pro. The 15 Pro is a lot lighter compared to the uh, 14 Pro. Not by much, as in the numbers with the grams, but again, with the feeling of it, it definitely feels a lot lighter. The sides, we'd have a brushed metal finish with the 15 series, as you can see, and the sides are a little curved, unlike the 14 series, so it doesn't actually just jab into your hand, which was probably the biggest problems with the 14 and the 13 series of iPhones. Now that they have the 15, they have actually fixed that. And right away, I can tell you since it's lighter and the edges are curved, this is an, a lot more comfortable device in my opinion. I'll probably still go out and daily drive the 14, 15 Pro, uh, just like I did with the 14 series. I don't know, for some reason, I do like the size of the, uh, 14 Pro, uh, the 15 Pro, unlike the Pro Max. I do have an S23 Ultra, and one of the main reasons I actually use that device is because it is their top tier device. But unlike 
with Apple, we do get the same specs, except this year, we do have one difference with the 15 Pro Max. So this year with the 15 Pro Max, we do get a five times zoom lens, which is kind of annoying that we don't get it with the 14 Pro, with the 15 Pro, and we only get it in the Pro Max, as usually they're supposed to have the same specs other than the battery and the display size, and one of the main reasons is because it's a larger device. But now this year, they have actually added one more thing to the Pro Max series, and that's gonna be the five times optical zoom lens. We still do get a three times with the 15 Pro. So, other than that, these devices don't really have a difference uh, with each other, but compared to last year, some of the differences again, uh, the cameras are a little more upgraded. Uh, hopefully we do get a better, better battery life. With the 14 Pro, I did struggle a lot. I had to sh charge my device more than once in a day sometimes and for some reason the battery life was pretty terrible i know a lot of people know about this already it's been going around twitter recently or x and so that's been an issue with mine as well and so having the 15 pro now this year with the a17 pro chipset and eight gigabytes of ram we do have a 3300 milliamp hour battery here and a 4400 milliamp hour battery here i hope we do get better battery specs and our battery does last a lot longer compared to the 14 series I do like to carry the smaller device around, so I really don't want to use the larger device, but if it comes down to it, I might actually have to. So if we do take a look at the bottom, we can see that we do have a USB-C port, which is just, I don't know, for some reason, this is a really exciting thing for me because I've been waiting for USB-C on my iPhones for a while now, and finally having that on here compared to the Lightning is just so much better. Uh, I do, still, we still do have MagSafe. Uh, I will still be using MagSafe a lot with my devices, but again, other than that, really not much else to it. So if we do go ahead and take that off and power our device on, we also do have thinner bezels with these phones and voila. So again, we do have thinner bezels with these phones. Uh, the glass is a little more curved, so it does feel a lot more comfortable. But other than that, the displays are pretty much the same. We still do get a 2000 nit peak brightness, which is still uh, top quality right here compared to other devices. But other than that, just from looking at it, as you can see right here, they are very similar. So as I said, the bezels are a little thinner. It's a little lighter. We do get USB-C charging. The cameras are basically the same, just a tad bit different. And so not really much has changed. We also do get an action button. So you've probably seen this. This was probably another big thing. Uh, big thing. Uh, they did remove the silent switch right here and they did change it into this action button. Still does the same thing. So all you have to do is just hold it or tap it, but you can actually set it to do something else. You still do get the same haptic feedback, so that's not gonna be an issue. But again, other than that, these devices are very similar. So let me go ahead and quickly get this device set up. And once I do do that, I'll go ahead and get back to y'all. We'll go ahead and check out a couple more things and we'll wrap this video up. So I now have the 14 Pro or the 15 Pro set up. It was kind of a pain getting this set up, especially with the eSIM stuff. Uh, I actually had an issue with it, and right now I currently don't have cellular data on my 15 Pro. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to get that activated by the carrier, which is one of the most annoying things that I've been dealing with with my 13 Pro to the 14 Pro and the 14 Pro to the 15 Pro. So Apple, I don't know why I removed it, but just having a physical SIM card, in my opinion, is, and is just a lot better than this eSIM stuff. All right, so the phone is set up now uh, right away. The difference is are basically nothing. So I haven't been able to tell the difference other than the weight and feel of it, feeling of this device, which is just a lot better from the 14 Pro. But again, other than that, there is basically no difference between these devices. So quickly, I do want to talk about the cameras. So I did not get the 15 Pro Max set up yet. It's just sitting there for now, but we do have a couple new camera settings. We do have our raw max setting, as you can see right here, which goes ahead and use is all 48 megapixels but in its normal setting, it does shoot in 24 megapixels, which is good to know. Unfortunately, in night photos, it does not use 24 megapixels. It does use 12 megapixels, but again, its night photos are super great. So we do have our 0.5X, we have a 1X, uh, which is gonna be the 24 millimeter. We do have a 28 millimeter and a 35 millimeter, which is gonna be the 1.5. We do have our 2X and we do have our 3X optical zoom. We still do have our macro mode. If all right, so we do have our macro mode, which is good to know. And we also do have a new mode. When you do take a photo of a person or an animal, it actually detects that it's a person or an animal, and you can actually apply a portrait effect on that photo after you take the photo, which is super nice. So you don't even have to go into your portrait photo, which is good to know. 
And then we do get all of our normal video settings. So we do get 4K, 30, 60 FPS, which is all good to know. So everything other than that is basically the same between these devices. The 15 Pro Max does get the 5X zoom, uh, unlike the 3X that we do get on the 15 Pro. And we can only go up to 15X on the 15 Pro. We can go up to 25X on the 15 Pro Max. So again, as I said, other than that, these devices don't really have a difference. So we do have the action button. Let me go ahead and quickly show you how that works. So all you have to do is just hold it and you can actually go ahead and set this up to have something else in the settings. And this goes for both the devices. Again, we do have USB-C, but other than that, these phones are very similar to the 14 series. So that'll basically wrap it up for this video. As always, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe and see y'all in the next one.